Uh, my Constellation was a film that my brother Toby, who's a director, um, he came up with the concept ages ago. It was actually a concept for a music video. And he told me, I was like, oh, that'd be beautiful. He has this little boy riding a bike across the countryside with light bulbs everywhere, and he plants the light bulbs. Um, and it has an ending, which I won't give away yet. Um, and I was, when he told me, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. We should definitely do that. And so we kind of were waiting for the right music video to come along that would suit it. And then Tropfest released their signature item that was light bulb. <laughs> and so as soon as we heard that, Toby went, my constellation. But that wasn't what his name was at the time, but still we were just like, oh, that's perfect. And so we were just like, well, we have to do it. Like, we can't not do this. It's perfect. It's such a trot festy kind of film. It's got the signature item all over it. It's and it'll be beautiful and it'll be something that we should... We were at the stage where we really wanted to kind of put a lot of effort into it, doing a film properly, you know, and not shoot it with just him and his mates and, you know, a little 5D or something like that. We're like, let's try and really push it and make a film as good as we possibly can. And, and so, yeah, so we, we threw all of our money into it. Me, Toby and Henry, the producer, threw his, yeah, like all of our money into it. Um, I don't actually know what the final figure was. Um, I kind of don't really want to say, to be honest, because it's like, I feel that people go, oh, okay, cool, you did that for 10 grand, so next time I've got five grand, let's, like, they'll, you know. So I kind of don't like really saying how much it cost. Um, because it, we did it on that less than minimal. We did it on less than what you could possibly do it on. It was all favours. Everything was all deals. It was all, no one really got paid, except for like some key crew, like gaffers and, yeah, I think that's kind of it. <laughs> so no, we didn't, we didn't borrow it. We, we just saved up and, and um, we all threw in as much as we possibly could. And, um, and that amounted to, when you're trying to do the things that Toby wanted to do for that film, you know, it was all locations all over the state or country, crane moves, night shooting, you know, lighting, and we we're just like, how are we going to actually do this? Because Toby is a really creative director and he comes up with these amazing ideas, but they're really, really difficult ideas to pull off um, with no money. So it was a real big challenge. It was really hard. Probably the hardest work, like the hardest shoot that I've ever been on was my constellation because most of the time was all traveling to locations and having to manage all the gear and you know we didn't I didn't have an assistant like it was just it was really really hard work we were up for 24 hours at one point and then slept for two hours then wake up to do a dawn shoot and like you know it was just madness um, everyone doing five different roles you know getting the actor to do the slate you know like just like so minimalist and so low budget and so just like scraping as much together as we could and we kind of put everything that we had into the the screen you know what I mean so we wanted it to look like a big budget Hollywood film done for nothing um, and I'm kind of proud of what we did like uh, it's still nowhere near a big budget Hollywood film but I, I, I like the fact that we got some crane stuff in there and we I feel like we we pushed us to the limits at the points where we felt we really had to um, and kind of wound back a bit in the points that we probably didn't need to push the budget so far but um but no I'm really proud of it and it got into Tropfest and we're obviously really happy um and it's since then it's done amazing things it's been in New York Tropfest it's been in Dubai um it got into the Toronto Film Festival for kids which was amazing me and Toby went over there and um, that was probably one of the best screenings I've been in because it was a screening of about two, three hundred kids from underprivileged areas of Toronto and they came in and they showed them a bunch of inspiring short films and our film was one of them and they loved it and they came up to us afterwards and they were thanking us for making such a cool film and they're like, oh, it's so great, we love it and it was really awesome to get that kind of feedback. Um, and yeah, I'm proud of it. Shot it on a Red One with the MX chip. Um, when that kind of first came out. Um, lighting wise, once again, it was kind of me and a Kino and a Dito and a bit of Phil. Um, maybe I had, like, I think Henry, the producer, would like 
hold the fill, you know, like it was <laughs> like Toby would be holding the light while yelling directions and stuff. Like it was really <laughs> lo-fi. Um, but there was one, there was two scenes actually where we got a gaffer in because we just had to. Like I had to light the whole front of the house or we did the shot with the um, astronauts falling down this big tube set that we made. Um, you know, I couldn't light that with a Kino and a Dito. Like we needed a, a bunch of different lights. So we got someone in for that, um, which was awesome. Uh, but still, once again, everyone did a favour. It was still, even though we got gaffers in, they did it for massively cheap, um, which we were really grateful for. And, um, and once again, we managed to push the envelope, I feel, on low budget, like s to give it a cinematic kind of look, you know? You mean the opening scene? I think so. Where he's, he's got his head hanging out the window and he climbs into bed. Uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to have a gaffer for that scene. Um, and actually, no, it was only for the stuff with his head hanging out the window at the start. And you see the mum walk off to the car. Um, I had a, a, a great gaffer, Graham, Graham Dixon, I think, um, for that. And he came up with some great ideas, like putting the light behind the tree so it all it was backlit and looked beautiful and, um, and lit the kid really nicely, I was really happy with that. And then, but then when you cut to him going inside and he kind of climbs into his bed, we shot that like two, three, four weeks later. Um, and that was just me and a couple of Ditos. And so I had to just do that all myself, um, which was hard, but yeah, it was literally just, I think three Ditos, one coming in from outside to do a bit of moonlight, um, one bouncing off the wall to light his face. And I think one for a bit of room ambience and that was it. You know, um, really minimalist. Yeah, that scene, well, that shot, sorry, I say scene, but it's one shot. Um, that shot took up, I think, more than half the budget of the whole film was that one shot because we, we built, because once again, Toby came up with this great idea, but we're like, oh, how are we going to actually do that? Um, so we built a, a tube set, like the International Space Station, um, well, I think it was like 15 metres tall, it was quite tall, and with an opening at the bottom so we could get in with the camera. And we had the, the actor Ben on a, um, on a rope pulley system, and so he, he would fall down towards the camera and they kind of push him off to the side while the other actor, Bali, was on, I think he was just on like a rolly office chair, and he kind of pushed himself away, so he kind of floated off while Ben floated down. And it took us, I think we did... It was over 20 takes to get that right. And we finally got that one take that all worked perfectly. And that's the take in the film. Um, and lighting wise, I think I just had some, some light, like a blondie or something coming through the, the window. So it was like the sunlight coming through. I had, um, we lit the, the tubes, like the th four walls of the set, we lit with Kino tubes. So there was a bit of general, you know, Kino fluoro kind of ambience. Um, I think I had a backlight up behind him and um, a couple of other bits and pieces. I don't know, it was a long time ago. I can't really remember that much about it, to be honest. But that was it. Once again, it was pretty simple, really. Like, it wasn't that complicated lighting-wise. It was just the choreographing all the actions. And the, Oh, by the way, and the camera was on a, like a mini jib, like a tiny little jib so that we could kind of pull the camera down and away on a bit of a... Yeah, it was really hard. <laughs> but we did it. Yeah, the silhouette of the two kids in the grass. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really like that stuff. Everyone seems to really like that that scene, um, and so do I. It's, it's, I'm really happy with it. Um, it was something that me and Toby kind of came up with. He wanted this scene with the two of them. Um, I think he actually wanted it in the park during the day, and so I kind of threw out the idea, why don't we do it so that, but just at night, and so they're just silhouettes, and you could. The idea was initially to play the whole scene out in one shot, um, but as we kind of developed the scene, it, it turned into a bigger thing, so we needed to do a bit of coverage. Um, but the main, yeah, it's just that image of the two kids with the grass silhouette and the sky in the background and him holding the light bulb up to the sky. Toby was like, that's, that's the shot that represents the film. That's, we have to get that. Um, so yeah, it was a sunrise shoot, actually. Um, and so yeah, it was 4.30 in the morning or something. The kids were really tired. <laughs> Uh, we were all really tired because we'd actually been up until like 2 a.m. the night before doing that bedroom scene. Um, but yeah, was, there's not really that much to it, to be honest. I remember um, 
It's like uh, Dean Semler, I remember, was asked, I sort of talked with him and someone asked him about, well, he was talking about how he had been asked about that shot in, I think, Dances with Wolves or whatever, where it's like the two horseback riders against the sun silhouette. It's a really beautiful shot. And people were like, oh my God, that shot's amazing. And he's like, yeah, we figured out where the sun was and we pointed the camera in that direction and rolled. Like, it's not, you know, there's no trick or anything. It's just a silhouette shot. But, um, and that's, that's pretty much just what I did. Just figured out where the, went in there, did a location wreck a couple of weeks earlier, figured out exactly where the sun's going to rise and what kind of um, hill is going to have the sun directly behind it. So you've got to work that out and then just turned up in the morning and pointed the camera in that direction and hit roll. It's not really that much to it really, but I really like it. It came out really well.